This week on the Computer Chronicles, we'll help you find what you're looking for on the net. We'll show you the basics of how to use a search engine, and we'll explain the differences between some of the most popular search sites. We'll teach you the simple secrets of Boolean searches that can narrow down the results of the search. We'll show you a specialized search engine that acts like an automated yellow pages, and we'll explore the new world of intelligent agents that learn as they go. Plus, we'll show you the very cool PointCast service and one search engine that uses a unique piece of technology, a human being. All this and Giles Online, this week's Computer News, my pick of the week, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated. One software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside the business magazine for the technology elite. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. If you've been on the net lately, you've noticed there is a lot of stuff out there. Millions of web pages, thousands of news groups. How in the world do you find what you want? Well, in general, the answer is not very easily. For most users, of course, the answer is some sort of search engine, but there is a skill involved in knowing how to do an efficient search. And Alan, that's what I want to talk to you about. But I guess before we get to the search engine issue, there are really other things you ought to do, like get your browser set up right, deal with plugins, kind of explain that stuff. Once, if you're one of the 35 million or so people that are surfing the web, when you get to your, your browser first set up, you want to personalize it and make it as easy for you to use. And one of the things you want to do is once you find a site that you like, you want to bookmark it. And here is the bookmark section. And for example, we find something on ecology and environment that we like, we would have had set it here so that we can get to it regularly. And again, so once you've done a search, found the site you like, no need to do it again. So that's what a bookmark does. It, it lets you easily go back to the same place. It creates efficiency. OK, what about plugins? Plugins are the kind of things that allow you to take advantage of special websites that have some added functionality that creates value, like sound with real audio, mm -hmm. macromedia, shockwave. So when you get to a page that's set up with that, it allows you to take advantage of it. So you need the plugins downloaded ahead of time yes. so you can actually do the stuff when you get there. Right. All right, now when we get to search engines, there are lots of different search engines out there. How do you decide which is the best one or which one to use? Well, the best thing to do is to kick the tires of a few and see which ones work best for you. Each of them combs the web in a different way. They send out these crawlers that go right. out on the internet, find pages, and bring them into a database. Um, some, say, some go after different pages at different speeds, at different intervals, and you'll like the ones that return the kind of information but you want. But it's basically a kind of keyword search of, of web page right. indexes, right? Let's take a look at a couple. You have Yahoo up right now, and show us right. how you would do a search using Well, with Yahoo, Yahoo, we have the word San Francisco and restaurants in here, and what we're going to find are a bunch of pages that have that kind of information. So it says 29 matches, presumably right. telling us about places to eat in San Francisco. We can stop for a second. Now, here's a perfect example of how this stuff doesn't always work. You ask for San Francisco restaurants, and I'm getting something here that's talking about veterinarians and dogs and all that. And unless you eat dogs, this is not something that you're interested <laughs> in. Now, how does that happen? I mean, why do you get such terrible results when you ask for restaurants, you get something about vets? Because you haven't been very precise in what you're looking for. And it probably finds within that website the words San Francisco and restaurant and say, aha, this matches. But they may be in a totally different context. Absolutely. Kind of Okay, let's try another one now. InfoSeek is another popular search engine out there. So see if you can pull up InfoSeek and show us how that would be different, Alan. InfoSeek also combs the web at different intervals than the Yahoo search engine does. Also has a different kind of taxonomy, which are these little sections, your little yellow page listings that help you drill down into what you're looking for. And they do it differently than Yahoo does. So in, in addition to searching by word, it also kind of has a table of contents, if you will, and guides you to whatever arts or hobbies or news or business. Right. Simplicity and efficiency, those are some really important key words. All right, so what is UltraSeek? Now, that's actually a new thing, isn't it? UltraSeek is a new product from InfoSeek, which actually um, competes with some of the more powerful search engines, goes out and crawls more web pages more quickly, has a robust database. Any particular favorite of yours? I mean, in, in general, one thing you think does a good job? Well, my favorite is AltaVista. Uh -huh. AltaVista is great because it combs the largest number of pages and to me is the most user-friendly in terms of interface. We're going to take a look at that a little bit. Thanks right. a lot, Alan. All right, well, sometimes the computers can automatically do the searching for you. This is easiest in the area of news and information where there is a somewhat finite universe of facts to search. One of the best examples in this category is a very cool service called PointCast. Most people don't think of screensavers as information networks, but they can become more than pretty pictures with the right software. 
Point Cast of Cupertino, California, offers an information service over the internet that feeds customized news and data through a kind of active screensaver. You spend hours or days downloading freebies off the net. Uh, the thing that's neat about, about the PointCast application is it's something that you can use, and you need to use it as, you need a screensaver anyway. So if you're going to have a screensaver, you might as well make it um, do something for you. And this gives you news and information as it happens. PointCast feeds fresh news to your PC's screen whenever the machine is idle. You can choose from a selection of channels that includes CNN, the LA Times, sports, and weather. Clicking on any headline takes you to the full text news story. It's a cross between a web browser and a TV. Business TV is very uh, broad based and this is much more um, sort of pinpointed because I, I got to customize it and I can select what I want to see. PointCast is expanding the service to work with corporate intranets so that general news can be combined with messages from inside the organization. What PointCast does is it makes it unbelievably simple for you to get the benefits of the internet. A lot of times when you talk to people, the reason why they, they really haven't investigated the internet to any large degree is because they have to invest so much time in getting any value out of the internet. Whereas PointCast brings all of that to the surface of your screen, you don't have to do anything to get that benefit. Of course, the service isn't really free. An advertising window is constantly flashing and rolling in a corner of the screen. But for internet users who want someone else to do the searching, PointCast could offer the right mix of working and watching. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Now, we've seen some relatively simple examples of how to retrieve the information you're looking for, but if you know some of the secrets of how search engines work, you'll find you can save a lot of time and or money finding the site you're really looking for. And, Louie, that's what I want to talk to you about. First of all, there's kind of a misconception that it's a bad thing if a search returns 10,000 hits. That's not necessarily the case, is it? Absolutely. The web is huge. The web is getting bigger. Uh, you would always get a lot of answers. The, the important thing to remember is that search engines works in such a way that the important document that matches your query the best will be the ones at the top. You can ignore the other 10 million. Give us an example. Well, here's something. Here's a request I typed in plain English. What is the capital of Alaska? And I would just submit this. And what we see is that the very first thousand. page, we got 100,000. But the very first thing is something about Juno. The first one was the one you were looking for. Absolutely. All right. Uh, let, let's try another case in which you can really fine-tune a search in which we don't quite get what it is we're looking for. I think both of us are suffering from sore throats right now. We need some chicken soup. So <laughs> we wanted to make some chicken soup, so and I wanted a recipe. We're going to look on the web for some chicken recipe for chicken soup. And first, I'll ask for recipe with chicken. Okay. And here we go. We have plenty of recipe. But chicken, but, but it's not, not really chicken what we're soup. looking for, because chicken right. didn't do it. Okay. So let's just add the world soup, and the right thing should happen. Well, that'll make it better anyhow. Which means, when I'm talking, yes, we have grandma chicken soup recipe. You've still got 60,000 hits. Oh, we have plenty of hits. But a lot of stuff, on, I mean, this is crab and asparagus. That's not what I'm interested in. Absolutely. So we want to, be, to restrict this to really chicken soup, not just any web document containing the world chicken but and exactly soup But exactly chicken anywhere. soup. Exactly yeah. chicken soup. So we're going to do what we call a phrase. So if you put a quote in there, then you're saying around chicken soup. It says only that phrase, chicken soup, not yes. just the words chicken and soup. Absolutely. So I do this by putting a pair of double quotes around the world, chicken and soup. And I will submit this. And now yeah, right. everything in better. there is about chicken soup. Right. There's no, no other type of thing. Now let's refine this. Let's suppose that we're very picky and we absolutely hate rutabaga. Right. So I don't want a recipe that includes rutabaga. And so how do I tell the search not to do that? You say just minus, minus rutabaga. Minus the word or phrase you don't want. Okay. And that's all. So the minus sign is, is basically the not. It's saying don't. It says okay. do not bring anything containing those words. I don't want to see them. And I happen to know that the very first recipe before contained rutabaga is gone. Right. The next one is still very good chicken soup recipe. Now if you want to empty your fridge, yeah. you can play the game further by checking what's in your fridge. Let's say you find some onion. And okay, you spelled onion wrong here. Well, onion. <laughs> and say so you find right, some so this tomato. Also find anything with onion in it, anything with tomato in it, et cetera. Absolutely. But yeah. we still want a chicken soup recipe. Okay. So now we're getting a little too fuzzy here. We yeah. may have a recipe of pizza with onion and tomato. So what we're going to do is put a plus <coughs> in front of chicken soup so we still confine to all the documents uh -huh. containing chicken soup, not containing rutabaga, possibly containing onion or tomato. Okay, if they so do, chicken soup is the most important Absolutely. criteria now. And 
The other ones are either not or suggestions. Sure. And, and you can see that's a lot better now, isn't it? Well, we have more more recipes. We've got Hawaiian chicken soup. That's an interesting one. Cajun <laughs> family probably has all the ingredients we discussed. All right, so you can see you can do a much smarter search if you know how to use some of these tools you were talking about. Absolutely. All right, thanks so much, Louis. All right, there are some examples also of specialized searches and, in fact, specialized search engines that can do very amazing things. One example is a website called Zip2, and that's your territory, Kimball. Right. I guess what, uh, what we're talking about are not general search engines where you're looking for all the stuff out there on the web, but, but special, and in your case, business search engines, right? Is that, is that what you do with Zip2? Yeah, Zip2 focuses more on business listings. So, for example, uh, if you're looking for a restaurant in San Francisco, ideally you want to use some, something like Zip2 because it's focused on exactly that. So what you've really put together is like what, the, the national or the international yellow pages, if you will. That's right. Okay, so let's do an example. Suppose we are, that seems to be the popular theme today, looking for a restaurant in San Francisco. So how would we do it using Zip2? Well, in this case, it's personalized to me. So I log in, and it already knows who I am. Okay. Puts my address in, and I already, all I have to do is type in the word restaurant, define the fact that I want it within half a mile of my home, uh -huh. press search. And that's it. Now, as opposed to things like Yahoo, what uh, Zip2 does, it'll actually come back with a listing of restaurants and divide it up into categories. So it not only says, here's 100 examples, but it sorts them out, it pre-sorts them for you in a useful right. kind of way. All right, so what would you do now? Well, let's choose French restaurants, and uh, we'll go in. And again, it brings it down to a more usable list of eight restaurants. Mm -hmm. Eight restaurants within half a mile of, of my home. All right, is that the end of it now? It just gives me the restaurant? Not at all. In fact, uh, that's one of the advantages of the internet, is that you can actually take users further. So let's go ahead and have a look at uh, Brasserie Savoy. And uh, you can see a map is generated giving you an idea of where it is. You can also get directions mm -hmm. to, uh, to the business. Again, it puts the information in for me because it knows who I am and knows where my location is. All right, so it's giving you a map. Uh, can we see this? It was a little map of, of exactly where the restaurant was. But OK, so that helps a little bit. But I saw something say, say get directions, as you said. It can actually tell you how to get there? That's right. It'll give you door-to-door -door directions. Okay, go see. Well, it knows where you are because you customize it. So it assumes you're at your address in there. That's right. Can you change that? You can. It's fully dynamic. And in this case, I can go ahead and change it to another address if I wanted to. All right. Well, let's, let's get directions. Just see actually how this would work. This is pretty cool. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting directions okay, from so my you're home. you're in your house on California Street. And you're saying, take me to this place on Geary Street. And right. How do I get there? Well, it's going to tell you it's half a mile away. Wow. Three-minute drive. Remember, I asked to search to maintain it within, half, within a half a mile. Start out going east on California towards Jones, turn right on Jones, left on Post, right on to Shannon, right on to Geary, and you're almost there. Okay. What's your source of information? I mean, this is not in the yellow pages, so what, what are the sources, that, what are the databases you put together for Zip2? Well, it's a combination of a business listing database and a geographical database, and it is the most detailed, detailed geographic database available today. And uh, we focus on making sure the quality is, is exactly what the yeah. user expects. And, and this is a website, right? So it's just, it's up there yeah, after it's buy. Yeah, it's a publicly it. available and it's free to the user. Good deal. Thank you. All right, well, software-driven search engines can do a pretty good job, but, you know, there's nothing like a person, a real human being, who knows your interests and can guide you to the right destination. That is the secret of one search engine called the Angle. Broad Vision Technologies of Los Altos, California, has a new and clever twist on the web search engine called the Angle. Instead of just promising more, it promises to be more selective, but in a very personal way. So it's meeting a person on an individual basis, asking them for their name if they choose, <laughs> um, asking us, them to give us their preferences, and then turning around and with a human touch giving them back information that's based on those preferences. To use the angle, visitors are asked to respond to several levels of questions about their taste and style, as well as their content and subject preferences. After creating a basic profile, Angle users have a choice of four individuals, all with different personalities and views. These editors are responsible for sifting through and finding sites that appeal to them, and hopefully to the people who choose them. That would make sense if we just put things in the current. The Angle's editorial staff meets regularly, just as they would at any publication. The four community editors take a very personal approach to their work, and they try to keep their select audience in mind. I'm sure I'm unique, but I'm also sure there are lots of other people who have the same interests I have. And yes, so they know up front what my interests are, that they're news and politics, and I like certain kinds of arts and entertainment and, you know, home and lifestyle stories or sites. Uh, so yes, I recognize that I'm not recommending just for myself, but for lots of other people. 
The angle's narrow casting ability does not rely solely on humans, however. Behind the screens, software is also making decisions based on a set of rules. It's adjectives that we use to rate and describe certain websites or web columns. So in the profile you can choose, I want straightforward or bold information, or I want artistic alternative information. And I think those are universal adjectives that people understand. It's as if you're choosing sort of a magazine, you know, what style of information do you like? For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. The ultimate in automated searching tools is something called an intelligent agent or a smart agent. This is a search program that learns and changes its search criteria based on its experience, or really based on your experience. Richard, that's what you guys at Autonomy are doing, and I, I want to ask you about the general idea. Uh, how do we use smart agents here? I mean, what does it mean that they're smart or intelligent? Well, it essentially means that they get an understanding of what it is about you that you're interested in at a particular time. How do they get that understanding? Primarily by you showing them examples of what you're interested in. Right, so you've got a couple agents sitting here, which you use the sort of uh, icon, the metaphor of a dog, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and what have these particular agents been trained to do? Well, there are four on screen here. There's one that knows about Saddam Hussein and, and the Kurds, called Iraq. There's mm -hmm. a Bill Clinton agent interested in, in President Clinton, etc. There's a John F. Kennedy agent interested in assassinations. And there's a BMW Z3 agent. Okay. So those are things that I'm particularly interested in, but they could be anything. All right. So if we wanted to, for example, if we were interested in the JFK assassination stuff, mm -hmm. that particular agent, that little dog there, has been trained to look for stuff dealing with that. Show me how I would actually use him. Um, the way that you would use him is, is firstly to train it, okay. um, which involves taking it to training school and typing in something that describes what you're interested in. So okay. for instance, I can talk about um, the assassination so um, this would be sort of like the well, words you might put into a, a, a search engine? Yes, but um, much more a question of describing the subject area than so specific keywords. So you can just write words. a sentence, write yeah, a paragraph. Lee Harvey okay. Oswald did it, allegedly, uh -huh. um, and anything else that, that's of interest to you. Um, so I'll stop at that point. Okay, so you're saying, hey, agent, these are the kinds of things I want you to look right. for. And more is better, actually, uh, as opposed sure. to having to cut down. Okay. Now, so I've done this before, so there's a, something being shown to me. Is, a, is this the kind of thing you mean? Right. Um, so I suppose we sent that agent out now to go look for stuff. Right. There are various things that it can do, um, starting with the fact that you can send it out into the web. So we'll go out into the web and find okay. things. So our JFK agents going out to the web, right. pulling back stuff dealing yeah. with that. Yeah. All right. Now, the important point here is that it's going to find some stuff, and I'm now going to give it additional feedback, right, and kind of retrain the agent, say, yes, That's that right. was a good one, that was a bad one. How do we do that? Well, firstly, we'll wait for a few things to come back, okay. which can take a few seconds. The key thing here, really, is that you're not supposed to be sitting watching it. It's something that's supposed to carry on in the background. Right. Um, and then um, when it brings things back, you can view them. So you can go and do something else that's okay. more, more interesting. And what's this you. little uh, diagram it's showing us? Well, this is showing the sites it goes to, uh, the color of which indicates the relevance of them. So you can go back to any of these and investigate what was done there. So this is basically neural network technology that's underlying this? That's right. It decides what's significant about what you're asking and how good a particular okay. site so is. So it's showing us some of the stuff it, pull, it pulled out here yeah. based on what you told the, that agent you were looking for. That's right. Now, again, show me h how we would now look at some of this, analyze it, and set, tell the dog, well, yes, no. Okay. The first thing is to view something. So we can view one of these documents, which will export it to a standard browser. Mm -hmm. You can read that uh, at your leisure. You can also carry on browsing while the, while the, the agent carries on in the background. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't restrict you from doing anything. Um, and then the retraining process is one where you say, well, thanks for that. That's, we've got a bit of information there. Um, now, retrain. Let's get some more information. And it will show you what it's brought back. And you have the opportunity to say, good or not good. Okay, and the um, agent will sort of learn now to fine-tune its search in the future right. based on how well it did the first time that's out, right. second time out, and, and all the information is contained in those documents. All right, last question. Just a little bit of time left. Can I get my agent working with somebody else's agent to sort of do a, a, an automatic robot transaction? That's right. There's, there's um, a facility called Agent World where you send your agents away to a server where they interact with other agents, and interaction can be things like dating services where it'll find other agents of interest to you. Um, or it can be places where they'll browse from a server uh, and save you the online ads time, or buyers anything and like that. Something. That's right. That's very cool. And you can get this stuff on your website? That's right. At agentware.com at the moment is a beta release yeah. and it's full release. Richard, indeed. very interesting. Thanks a lot. Well, there are still more search tools out there on the web to help you find what you're looking for. Our webmaster, Giles Bateman, has some additional tips on sites that can get you where you want to go. 
Thanks, Stuart. There are several great ways to search for things on the internet, depending on what it is you're looking for. Let's start with Digital's Alta Vista. Many of you may use this. It's still one of the greatest uh, search engines on the internet. One of the ways that I find is more efficient to work with it is to scroll down from the main page and click on text only. As a matter of fact, I have bookmarked the text only page to search for things. It makes everything go a lot more quickly. So what I'm going to do is type in the name of a band I'm looking for, Rusted Root, and click Submit. And it uh, brings back all of the matches. So I can click on the first one in the list. And sure enough, here I am at uh, a Rusted Root page. Now what I'm going to do is show you another uh, cool search tool. This one's called Bargain Finder. This is just a prototype of technology, but it's an agent that will actually go out and search the internet uh, music retailers for different albums and find the best bargain. So I've typed in Rusted Root, notice a pattern here, and when I woke, I can click shop for the album, and then what it'll do is this little guy over here, you can kind of see him with the headlight, he's out there searching for uh, bargains on Rusted Root. Now, I'll let him do some searching and come back to him in just a second. The last search in engine I want to show you is called Hotbot. This uses a cool new technology, uh, uses clustering to do searches a lot more quickly. Typed in Rusted Root. One of the cool things you can do here is go into expert mode and search on uh, a number of factors. In some cases, like uh, depending on the contents of the doc document, whether it's JavaScript or Acrobat. Let's go back to our bargain finder and see how he's done. I'll scroll down just a little bit. And here I found a bunch of different listings uh, for places and prices that I can buy the album I was looking for. Thanks, Giles. It's time now for our weekly summary of the latest cyber news. Here's Lori Anderson with this week's edition of Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, Silicon Graphics has introduced its first computers based on technology developed with its new merger partner, Prey Research. The new computers range from workstations starting at about $6,000 to massive supercomputers costing millions. The new technology allows several different computer subsystems to work on the same information at the same time, rather than in sequence. Apple Computer announced the first integrated solution for inputting Chinese text on Macintosh computers. The suite allows for dictation, handwriting, as well as keyboard input of Chinese characters. It will be available in November for less than $200. A startup company called Marimba is launching software named Castanet and Bongo. The new Castanet software is designed to update information from the Internet, allowing companies to send you news and software upgrades automatically. Bongo is a visual tool for authoring Java applications and creating graphical user interfaces. More than 150 photographers from around the world focused their lenses on the human face of cyberspace for a day last February. Rick Smolin, creator of the Day in the Life photography books, produced the event called 24 Hours in Cyberspace. Some 200 of the most compelling photos have been brought together in one book due to be released in November. The book will include a CD-ROM containing the entire 24 Hours in Cyberspace website. Well, if cooking is your favorite pastime after playing on your computer, of course, you can combine the two with the new William sonoma Guide to Good Cooking. Recipes and instructions and can be found on this new software from Broderbund. the clove into pieces. Then rock your knife back and forth over the pieces until they are very finely chopped. And just in time for a Halloween, Sierra Online is introducing a new game on the dark side called Lighthouse. That's it for this week's news. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. Some computer games let you do things you could never do without a computer. Other computer games let you do things better than without a computer. Well, a new game called Bricks is in that latter category. Bricks is the perfect game for kids and adults who like to play with Legos but always lose the pieces because this game is essentially virtual Lego with an almost infinite box of Lego pieces that lets you build anything you want. The design environment is 3D, so you can rotate your creation and see it from any angle. You can choose from dozens of differently shaped pieces. The bricks come in 12 colors, and with this virtual LEGO set, you can change the color of a brick you've already used just by clicking on it. And if you've built something really complicated, you can animate your creation and see how it works. Bricks comes in two versions, a simpler one designed for kids and a more complicated version, the sort of Technic line for more serious designers. Bricks is kind of like 3D Tetris without the clock. It's a great creativity game, one of those computer games that will stay on your hard drive for a long time. It's called Bricks, and it's available from Griffin Software. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with the latest cool stuff in computers, CD-ROM software, and the internet. I'm Stuart Chiffre. Hope to see you here next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part 
by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. Videotape copies of all Computer Chronicle shows are available for $32.50. Please order by show number and topic. And for more detailed information about the series, guests, and products featured, you can also order a subscription to the Chaffee Letter. In each issue, Stuart provides his unique insights and thoughts about the fast-changing world of personal technology. Videotapes and the Chaffee Letter can be ordered by calling 1-800-800-9520 or by writing us at the Computer Chronicles. For more information on anything you've seen on today's program, check out our website at www.pctv.com.